Hello everybody, thank you for joining me. It's been a while since I've um, done a video. I've, uh, I've had to have a little break, just life's been very, very busy just lately. But I've, uh, I've got some news um, that's just come in in the last few hours, as far as I know, uh, Ringo related. I'm gonna go through a load of things that I've been buying and listening to lately. Uh, and um, I hope some of these are of interest to you. As always, if you've got any questions about any of this lot, ask them any comments on them, let me know. I've got a mixture of CD and vinyl here. Uh, I said there was some Ringo news. Uh, I'll do that first of all. This has just come out, as far as I know, just today. Uh, Ringo's got not one, not two, but three new EPs on the way. Uh, now I'm sure there's some people at this point thinking, well, if you're gonna release three EPs, why not just do an album? Ringo doesn't seem to be in the market for albums these days. He prefers to just uh, put little bits out there as an EP uh, as and when. So there's one that he's apparently recorded uh, and is done. He's done another with Linda Perry, who's been in, heavily involved in his last two EPs. She's going to be kind of, as he says, leading the project on the, the second EP that's coming. And he's got a third EP with T-Bone uh, Burnett, a country EP. So that could be interesting. Ringo seems to dabble in country-tinged tunes every now and again, and of course he did Bokus of Blues in 1970 as a full country album, so it'll be interesting to uh, see what comes of those. I, I do, there's no release dates yet. I think, the, I think the second and third EPs haven't even been recorded yet. They're going to be a, a while off, but maybe we might get some news about the first EP re being released fairly soon, hopefully. I will keep you informed of that, of course, as always. Uh, so, but other than that, in terms of Beatles news, it's so quiet at the moment. It is really quiet. There's not a sniff of any news of McCartney archives or Lennon um, deluxe editions or George or anything like that. But again, I'll be all over it as and when it happens. So anyway, what have I been buying lately? Well, I've got down here, amongst other things, what I think is almost certainly the most expensive single disc album I've ever bought. It's got to be. I can't think of any any times that I've been foolish enough to spend more. We'll come to that one. Uh, let's do first of all. I want to do one that I, I did briefly cover this um, in a video a few weeks ago when I showed the John Lennon um, white vinyl record store day. Give me some truth. Um, I caught, sort of briefly touched upon the fact that I'd got this, and w what what was amazing for me was that as well as getting sent that by uh, the Lennon estate. They sent me this so that I could compare this to the new release. So this is the original, uh, was it 2021 I think it was, wasn't it? 2020, uh, Give Me Some Truth um, album. I've got the CD box set, I've got that uh, on release day, but this is the vinyl box set. And uh, I mean, what I've played of this, it does sound absolutely superb, it really does. The one song especially that blew me away on this, um, and it might come as a bit of a surprise, was Dear Yoko, it just, the bass that comes through on this sounds absolutely fantastic, but like all the other Gimme Some Truth releases, it's got the ephemera, it's got the postcards in here, it's got the stickers, um, and, and four vinyl discs of remixes of John Lennon songs. Um, as a lot of you'll know, it's fairly, it's pretty much chronological, apart from at the end of the album, it kind of goes back and, uh, gives us give peace a chance and happy christmas war is over but other than that it's, it's pretty chronological uh but really nice stylization on these albums the track listings on the back there this is a regular black vinyl edition uh but i was i was so so taken aback with as i say especially dear yoko being the one song that just sounded absolutely fantastic in this but that's the regular black vinyl version very nice. Uh, so yeah, I was really, really pleased and uh, thankful to be sent this as well. Uh, I mean, it's 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 crazy. Um, I will never ever take for granted or assume that it's going to keep happening. But you know, while it's happening, while they're sending me stuff, I'm all for it. Um, so yeah, give me some truth vinyl box set. That's really nice. Next up, this is a band that I've I've discussed a few times. Uh, the Lemon Twigs. This is their new album. It only came out, I think, two weeks ago. This is called Everything Harmony. This is their fourth album. Uh, there they are. They're brothers Brian and Michael Daddario from New York. They're still only in their early 20s. This is their fourth album. The other three albums are really good. This album, they've kind of stepped it up a level. 
the first time I listened to it, I was thinking, this is like their, this is their, uh, their rubber soul, their uh, surfs up, their bookends. It's got elements of those, that kind of album in here. L loads of great harmonies, very acoustic, really catchy songs. I would thoroughly recommend, if you've not heard the Lemon Twigs, to check, check them out. There is, um, I think, a clear vinyl version as well that's available, but I went for the regular black vinyl, which is very nice, and it was only... About £18, I think, I paid for this on Amazon. So I was really pleased with that, really enjoying this new album from them. I think uh, very, very interested to see how their career goes. I've seen them live twice now, um, and such a great live band as well. It's um, very kind of early 70s um, rock kind of feel to it. Really good. I'm going to come on to the last bit of vinyl soon, which, as I say, is this one that... Um, I kind of broke the bank a little bit for, but I'm going to do some CDs first of all. Um, this, uh, I got this a couple of weeks ago. This is uh, by Blur, who have just announced a new album in the last few hours. Uh, the Ballad of Darren, I believe it's called. It's coming out in July, so I'll definitely be, I'll definitely be ordering that and checking that out. But this is, a, I think this was a new reissue, but it was of an album that came out in 1998. Uh, there's the track list in there. This is all remixes from the... Uh, the Blur album here, the, the self-titled Blur album from 1997. And the especially track two, there's a, a remix of Death of a Party there, track two, which if you crank that up, just sounds absolutely superb. Uh, so you can get this for, I think, less than 10 quid. Uh, so if you, if you enjoy a remix by classic bands, then there's some good stuff on there. Now this next one, I really, I was not going to buy this. I was, I didn't see the point of it. I was kind of, kind of against it right from the, the moment it was announced. And then of course, as soon as it came out, I had to go and get it. And it's the new, I say new, album from U2, Songs of Surrender. So this, yes, I didn't really understand what the point of this was at first. It's, it's remakes or reimaginings, I think they're calling it, of 40 of their own songs. And we'll get you a look at the track list in there. So I mean, it's covering kind of all eras of U2 right back to the right back to the very start. And I got it, and I listened to it. I listened to it through headphones, and I think it's it works better through headphones. I think it sounds superb. The production on it that uh, I believe the Edge has done the production on this is is great. It sounds really good. The kind of um, dialed down versions uh, i mean you two have always been good at uh, sort of reworking their own songs especially for like a live version compared to a studio version uh, but some of these are, are kind of really interesting and um, i particularly like red hill mining town which is not which has never been one of my favorite songs off the joshua tree but the version that's on here i really like it um you can tell, obviously, Bono's got an older voice now. Um, but then there's one moment where, I think it's in Pride in the Name of Love, where they fly in what I think must be an original bit of vocal from 1984. And it's quite emotional when that comes in. You've been listening to kind of 60-odd-year-old 60, 60 Bono singing, and then 20-something-year-old Bono kind of comes in at the end of the song. And uh, it's a very interesting moment. So I was, yeah, I was not in favour of this album at all. But I've enjoyed it a lot more than I thought I was going to do. So I'm, I'm glad I've got that. Um, plus as well, I've got every U2 album they've ever released. And I thought, well, I can't just have one missing, can I? So I had, I had, to, I had to get it. Uh, but yeah, I'm quite enjoying that. Uh, now the next one. Uh, so I've got pretty much everything that The Jam ever released. I've got pretty much everything that Paul Weller ever released. Uh, from the start of his solo career, but I've, I'm one of those people who's always kind of criminally ignored the Style Council. Uh, I've never really listened to a lot of their stuff. I've always known Walls Come Tumbling Down, great song, Shout to the Top, brilliant. I've known the kind of classics, but I've never really delved. So three quid this was in HMV. It was one of the few times when I didn't, when I haven't come out of HMV really annoyed in the last few years, because usually that place just annoys me now. But that's a really good overview and pretty much chronological, I think, uh, from the start of the career through to the end uh, of of what they did. So I'm hoping that this will kind of grab me and hopefully lead on to me getting some of the studio albums as well, because 
like I say, I've I've kind of, for no obvious reason, I've, I've kind of ignored Style Council over the years. Um, now, I'm quite happy to admit that by far my favourite year in terms of pop music of all time is 1986. It just is. I was just the per perfect age uh, for it and... Um, I will always have a special affection for that year. So this this now yearbook series that's been coming out lately, covering um, I think from sort of the second half of the seventies through to about eighty six. I don't think they've gone beyond eighty six yet. Has been has been interesting. I haven't picked up many of them because I guess like a lot of people, it's getting sort of slim pickings in terms of the track listing that's here. I'm probably going to have most of the songs that I'm interested in. I'm probably going to have in CD quality anyway by now, just with all the compilations that I've picked up over the years. But there was enough on here, um, and with it being my favourite year, to replace some of the kind of um, the, the Napster versions that I downloaded 20 odd years ago when I was first getting into music. So I, I will continue to look at the track listing of all of these now yearbooks, and if I feel that it warrants it, uh, I think 82 is the next one that I've got my eye on. There's a few on there where I think that would be a good digital upgrade on what I've already got. Some of them I look at it and think, you know, I'd be paying eight or nine quid for, for one song that I need an upgrade on, and I'm not going to do that. But that one, uh, I, I just love 1986. I, 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 could, I could do many videos on the topic of 1986, and maybe I might just do that at some point. Now this next one, this is, uh, well, the next couple of ones that I've transferred over into the plastic wallets that I'm still doing. Um, I've got a video on that from about a year ago when I when I did this, when I started transferring jewel, my jewel cases over to these plastic wallets. I've got one particular video that refuses to die on that and I'm still getting loads of comments on it. I wanna gonna do a follow up to that soon, I think. But anyway, yeah, George Michael, 25. Um, now, I mean, I'm never gonna be, a, I'm never gonna be a massive George Michael fan, but I appreciate his talents and some of his songs I think are great. The reason that I bought this was kind of twofold. First of all, I bought it for the uh, the song Heal the Pain, which is down there on the second disc, featuring Paul McCartney. So I only had a really rubbish digital copy of that, so I wanted it on CD. That can kind of be on the peripheries of my Paul McCartney CD collection now. The other one I wanted it for, which has always been a favourite of mine, going back to my love of 1986, was uh, A Different Corner, which which is on here. Uh, number one single from early 1986, which I think it was the first time I heard a, a, a song by George Michael where I thought, that's amazing. I really love that song. So I kind of bought it for that as well. And then just coincidentally, a week later, I bought this that's also got a different corner on it. Uh, but... Yeah, I've, I've quite enjoyed listening to a few songs on that. Um, it's been it's been interesting getting to know just a little bit more of uh, of what he did, other than the kind of the obvious chart hits that are, that you you always hear on the radio. Uh, this next one, I'd be interested to know whether any of you are familiar with this album. This is an album that I've actually known really well for about fifteen years, but on a dodgy copy of, and I thought I'm finally going to buy it. Got it for a couple of quid off eBay, I think. Uh, the Papini Sisters, Bet Your Bottom Dollar. And it's it's fun. This is not an album to be taken too seriously. It's, it's was it 2006, I think it came out? Yeah, 2006 it, uh, this was made. Uh, but it's very much in the style of the Beverly Sisters, the Andrew Sisters, that old kind of 40s, 50s style. And some of the songs are from that era as well, like Mr. Sandman, Boogie Woogie Bugle Boy. But there's also things on here like uh, Bl the Blondie's Heart of Glass, done in that style. Kate Bush's Wuthering Heights, Panic by the Smiths. Uh, so you've got, I say modern songs, I mean even those songs are 40 odd years old now. But, but more sort of modern pop era songs done in an old, much older style. So it's very interesting, it's worth, worth a listen to. I've... I've always enjoyed that album and finally picked it up on CD. Um, so I get to the last couple of things that I've got here, um, which both arrived yesterday in the post. So this is uh, from the Super Deluxe Edition website, which I'm sure a lot of you f are familiar with. They're doing this great series at the moment, the Surround series, where they've got, um, I think this was about something like the eighth or ninth in the series, where they're taking albums and they are doing a physical high-res Dolby Atmos release 
uh, the latest one, well, maybe is it the latest one? There might have been one come out since, I'm not sure. Been Bob Dylan's Time Out of Mind, but this is the new 2022 remix that's on here. There's an interesting um, clash of styles here because this is a slipcase. That's the cover that features on the new Bootleg Series album. But if you take the slipcase off, they use the, the original cover of the album there, and you've got uh, kind of the original back cover there as well. So this is a Blu-ray disc. You're not going to be playing this on a normal CD player. You play this through a Blu-ray. This has got a Dolby Atmos mix of the new 2022 remix of Time Out of Mind, uh, which if you've not got Dolby Atmos, but you've got a 5.1 system, it will, it will play it as 5.1. It's also got a high-res stereo uh, version of the new remix on here as well. So I don't have Atmos capability or even 5.1 capability at the moment, but I might have in future. I don't want to get a system like that and then find I've not actually got anything to play on it. So, but I'm also interested for now in the high res version of the new remix. So it's a fairly simple package. It's got the disc in there, the Blu-ray disc, and in here it's got a booklet. I think this is the same essay that appears in the bootleg series box set, uh, but uh, a good essay on the album there. So these are kind of, I think this was about 23 pounds. It's worth keeping an eye out on the Super Deluxe Edition website because they're, they're often announcing new ones of these. Another one that's coming out soon that I've got on pre-order, um, I can't remember when it comes out, but fairly soon is a 50th anniversary um, Atmos and high-res mix of Tubular Bells, the original Tubular Bells by Mike Oldfield. So I'm looking forward to getting that um, when that gets released. I've got that on order. So that brings me to the last thing that I've been buying recently. And like I say, I'm pretty sure as far as I can think, I don't think I've ever spent this much on a record before. This was controversial. A lot of you will remember the controversy about this last year, um, which I'll go into a little bit in a moment. Michael Jackson. Thriller. This is the Mobile Fidelity once, uh, well, ooh, I nearly said one step recording and it isn't. It, is, it very much isn't. That was uh, part of the controversy. But let me just show you a, a copy of that. Uh, let me just show you that sticker that's on there. Uh, it gives you a bit of information there about the process you used to get this onto vinyl. So yeah, this was really controversial. Um, and some of you will have been following the story last year. So it said that it was originally advertised as being 40,000 copies only and that it was going to be um, a one-time uh, recording from the original analog master tape straight to st uh, onto lacquer straight to a stamper that would then stamp the albums and it was pointed out shortly afterwards you can't print 40,000 albums from one stamper you would have to keep going back to the master tape it can't just be one run of the master tape so there's a lot of controversy in the event controversy I'd pre-ordered this when it was first announced and it was about, I think it was £99 uh, when it was on pre-order. And then when all the controversy came out that actually what they'd used was a digital step, they had done a, a really ultra high resolution copy of the analog master tape and then used that to then print all the albums. Once that came out, just all hell let loose in terms of controversy. I I cancelled my order at that stage, not because I felt that this wasn't going to sound as good as it might otherwise have done. I just didn't like being lied to, and that's what happened. People were lied to. Mobile Fidelity lied to people. So I cancelled my order. There's always just been that little bit of me that regrets it, uh, because I really want to hear it. So this, was, this came up on eBay um, a few days ago. And I managed to get it considerably cheaper than what I would have paid uh, when it came out at the back end last year. Um, it's about £70. Let's put it like that, is what I paid. And let's just show you what you get in here. So you get you get the album in this very nice cover, nice branded mobile fidelity. I was kind of also happy, I was, I was, I was trying to sort of think that, um, I was trying to justify the fact that I'd cancelled for moral reasons about being lied to, but then I thought, well, my money, if I'm buying it now, doesn't actually go to them. So I kind of, maybe maybe I was sort of copping out a bit there, but I thought I could justify it. So I um, I played this last night for the first time, because it only arrived yesterday. Opening song. 
want to be starting something which has always been my favorite song on this album anyway just absolutely knock my socks off it is incredible like i say although there's a digital step in it it is a it is an ultra high resolution that they recorded it at and then they've done a really quality transfer onto vinyl from that it was also um sort of revealed uh, last year that as part of this process there's been quite a bit of compression on uh, the original mastering of thriller and, and pretty much every version since which was taken off uh, this or, or, or not added on this I'm not quite sure which could you take it off or would you have to have added it on deliberately if you wanted to but, ever, but whatever it's not there when it was there on previous versions and you can tell this has this has opened up so much in terms of sound it's got so much dynamics to it and it sounds superb it really does um, this is a kind of a replica cover that comes inside the main box set uh, which has got some nice uh, gold lettering on the side there. Hopefully you can see that. Uh, it's got it's got its own kind of uh, well. I don't know quite what the point of this is. It's completely blank and it opens up, so you wouldn't put your record in there because it'll fall out. I'm not really 100% sure what the point of that is, um, but if you know, if I'm missing something obvious, let me know. Um, and there is, I think there's a yeah, there's a another kind of replica here of a poster of Michael not a strange man at all in any way um, and also kind of a reproduction in a sleeve uh, that hasn't hasn't doesn't actually open up so you couldn't put a record in there anyway that's got the lyrics uh, I, I guess this was kind of uh, a, a, a copy of what was in the original pressing there's Michael and Paul there I mean would I say that this turned the girl is mine into a good song I don't know whether it's I don't know whether it can perform miracles uh, but it is it is superb sounding I do actually I do have an original pressing of Thriller that sounds really good but this is really another level above um, so I'm I'm really happy that I I went for this uh, mobile fidelity Michael Jackson Thriller, uh, really like that and I think I will play that regularly. So that's what I've been buying lately, um, like I say let me know down in the comments if you've got any questions or any um, opinions on any of this stuff, uh, but thank you very much for watching and I'll be back very soon with more. See you soon, bye.